Hi, it's Jack here. I'm one of the co-founders of NOSFET. Today we're just doing a quick start guide on how to get started on your NOSFET era. Now, if you're new to the electric Unisol community, this video is gonna be really helpful to you. If you are an old user, if you're an experienced user, you might find some of this information repetitive. Um, however, I do recommend looking towards the last part of the video where I talk about tuning the exact uh, ride adjustment to how you would like it, because I'm gonna go through every different setting. But when you first get your arrow, it's gonna be in transport mode. So let's go ahead and take it out of transport mode. To do that, you'll have to go onto the screen. So to take your wheel out of transport mode, what you'll want to do is you'll want to hold down the power button, which is this button on the right right here. And you wanna keep holding it down until you see the number nine, and then you can release. It is only after transport mode will the wheel turn on and fully auto balance. So now you can see the wheel has turned on and if we lift the wheel up, it will balance. So it won't topple over front and back. We can turn off the wheel and we can test it again. Once again, turning the wheel back on. And it balances. Now the second thing you should do with your NOSFA Arrow is check for the latest software. Now when the wheels are released from our production line, they're fully, fully up to date. However, during transportation, we might update to a new software, so it's always good to double check. Now, the only available application right now is for Android. However, we are in the works of making an iOS app. You can find our APK available on our website, which is nosfet.com support. I'll leave a link down below in the description. Once you have the APK fully installed, you can connect to the app, you can connect to the wheel, via Bluetooth, and in the top right corner, you can click firmware update and check for upgrade. I'm already on the latest software, so there's no need for update, but when you are updating, you need to have the wheel in this position, which is on its kickstand. Now let's talk about some of the basic, basic functionalities of your arrow. First, let's talk about the headlight, then we'll talk about the rear light, then we'll talk about the suspension, and then another thing is the tire pressure. So let's go in that order. Now let's demonstrate how to go through all the different headlight settings. To turn on the wheel, we'll use this button. Once the wheel is on, we'll use this button to toggle through all the different light modes. Low, medium, high. Now keep in mind the NOSFET Arrow's headlight will also adjust according to speed. So if you're riding at a higher speed, it will also brighten up. Now if we were wanting to adjust the rear tail light colors, we can use the power button again with a quick press. So I'll demonstrate that right now. We'll lift the wheel up so you guys can see. Stock is red, and with the push of this button, which is your power button, we can go through all the different rear light modes. The last option is to go stealth, which is completely all dark. You can also do that with the front headlight. Hold it down and it'll turn off. Now another function that the arrow has is its lift switch function. What that function does is it disables the gyroscope, which means that the wheel will no longer balance, which means that the motor will not free spin when you lift the wheel into the air. That will be really useful for if you're lifting this wheel into the car or up some stairs. To use this function, you need to hit the button on the very left while the wheel is at a complete standstill. So when you hit it, you'll hear the beep, the display will show P, and that's when you can lift the wheel up, right? There's no free spin. To engage the gyroscope again and you're ready to ride, hit it again, you'll see the double zeros displayed on the screen, and you're ready to ride. So I'll demonstrate again. On the button right here, hit this. That's when the gyroscope is ready and you're ready to ride. P means that the wheel will no longer free spin if you're lifting this up into the air. Now the NOSFA Arrow is ready to ride, but to get the wheel to be perfectly in tune with exactly how you want it to feel, there's a few more settings. Now the first thing is the tire pressure. Keep an eye on that. Different riders with different rider weights will require different tire pressures. However, I'll put a general guideline for what is the suggested tire pressure. Now keep in mind that the NOSFA Arrow is a tubeless tire, so you do want to keep your tire well inflated. The second thing is the suspension. Suspension tuning is completely 
up to personal preference, but let's go through what you can adjust on the NOSFET Aero. Let's lift up the trolley handle. Once you lift up this up, you'll find that the two suspension settings are on the top. Now keep in mind that the suspension on both the left side and the right hand side of the NOSFET Aero are exactly the same. So whatever you tune to the left hand side suspension, you also want to do with the one on the right. On the top, you'll find spring preload as well as rebound adjustment. To adjust the preload, you'll need a size 16 wrench. And all you have to do is turn this way, which is clockwise, to increase the preload, or counterclockwise to reduce the preload. You'll need a flathead to reduce or increase the rebound. So you want to turn it slow, which would be clockwise, to slow down the rebounding, or fast, which is counterclockwise, to make the rebound go a little bit faster. Now located at the bottom of the wheel, you'll find the compression. Now the compression adjustment is gonna be really good if you find yourself bottoming out a lot on the arrow. To increase the compression, you'll want to turn it clockwise. To reduce it, you'll want to turn it counterclockwise. All you need is a flathead to turn this middle dial right here. Now if you're a heavier rider, we do suggest increasing it a little bit and try it out before increasing it some more. Now let's go through all the different menu options and exactly what they mean. Now in the manual, you'll find all the different explanations for what the menu settings do on page 11. So if you're unsure of it, please have a look at page 11. Now there is a small sticker right here when you first get your arrow, which will tell you how to go into the options to tune exactly uh, your wheel. Now what you wanna do is hit this, and when you hear the beep, let go. Now you hear now you'll basically be in the menu setting. Now let's go through the menu settings to exactly tune the NOSFA arrow to exactly how you like it. Now, if you're unsure or I'm going way too quickly over what the menu settings mean, have a look at page 11 of your manual. It'll go into detail of exactly what it does. But I'll show you guys in person right now. So to go into the menu adjustments, you wanna click this button until you hear the beep, let go. And using the up and down arrows, you can navigate through the menu. So let's say we want to adjust MD, which stands for ride mode, which adjusts your pedal hardness. You can hit this, hear the beep again, and you can adjust this up or down. The lower this number, the softer the pedals will feel, which means that the pedals will lean in kind of the direction that you want it to go. Some people like it a little bit stiffer, some people like it softer. So it just depends on your ride preference. To back out and save, just hit this quickly, one more time, and you're completely back out at the main screen, and it's saved. We'll go into it again, and we'll go through all the different settings. Again, we're back at MD, which is ride mode. Now, let's go through the next one. The next one is ANG, which is vertical angle adjustment. Now, this stands for the angle of adjustment forward or back. So you can tilt the wheel forward or back beyond the gyroscope calibration. So you should always calibrate your gyro completely level, but if you do want your pedals to tilt back or tilt forward, you can adjust this number. So, so if you increase this number, it'll tilt forward, versus if you uh, go into minus, it'll tilt it back. Now the tilt back speed. Tilt back speed is at the set speed of this number right here, it'll tilt the pedals backwards. This is a safety feature. 200% will basically disable it. Now PWT, this is pedal PWM tilt back. So at the set PWM figure, which is this number right here. So let's say for example, let's do 72. So at 72% PWM, the pedals will tilt back. Now, if you don't want any tilt back at the set PWM figure, you can tune this all the way up, all the way to uh, 200. Now, understand that this doesn't mess with your PWM alarm. Your PWM alarm is always going to be at 86%. And that's a safety margin, you can't turn that off. 
the wheel will always warn you when you get to 86% PWM. Alarm speed. Alarm speed is the speed that you set to which the alarm will sound. So right now it'll sound at 200 kilometers an hour, which obviously is just turned off. But you can also do 20. So right now it'll be, if you're riding at 25 kilometers an hour, the wheel will sound its alarm. Let's go into the next setting. BRT. This stands for brightness. This is the brightness of the screen. So we can turn this up so the screen becomes brighter. CAL, calibration. Now, calibration is where you want to keep the wheel completely level to calibrate, recalibrate your gyroscope. It's good to do this once in a while, but if there's nothing wrong, you really don't really need to adjust your gyroscope at all. Mode one starts the process, and while you're holding mode one position, mode two confirms the position, and mode three completes it. So I'll have a look at the manual. I'll do a short demonstration on how it works. Let's go back in. Now transport mode. So if you're shipping this wheel or you need to get this wheel into transport mode, this might be useful to you. So again, you want to switch this all the way to 9, which will engage it to when you first got the wheel. And you can tell that when you turn on the wheel, now it'll do a count up timer. So you need to hold until 9 to reactivate it. You really don't need to use this function unless you're transporting the wheel. Maybe you're selling it or perhaps you're shipping it to another house or you're moving. This will be really useful. This ensures the wheel doesn't turn on whilst it's in transport, hence the name. Now, the next function is units. So obviously, this just goes from imperial to metric, depending on what you want. So kilometers per hour versus miles per hour. Let's go to the next function. Next function is VTA. VTA stands for voltage adjustment, which is a manual adjustment to adjust the unicycle's voltage to match a realistic number. This is more of a troubleshooting um, adjustment, not something that will impact your daily ride and not something you'll need to use um, unless you uh, are instructed to do so by your retailer. The side tilt angle. Now, if you're taking the NASA arrow off-road, uh, this is a really good function to pay attention to. The side tilt angle will adjust the cutoff angle of left and right. So 45 degrees will be something like this and 70 degrees will be something like this. This will be really good if you're off-roading. However, if you're using it as a daily rider, 45 degrees is plenty good. Now keep in mind that if you don't know what you're doing with this function, um, try it out first, because if you have it on a really high angle and the wheel topples over, the wheel can spin in place before it decides to disengage the gyroscope. This, again, is mostly a function for people who are using the NOSFA arrow to go off-road or do some uh, skate park stuff. Let's go into the next function. SND, which stands for sound. So this is the level of beeping sound. Now, it doesn't impact any of your sound alarms or safety alarms, just simply when you're going through the menus. So right now, it's at 8%. You can turn this all the way up. MXV. This stands for max charge voltage. This is where you can set an upper limit of the charge voltage that you want. So for riders who are living at the top of a hill where you're, when you get the wheel fully charged, you're going already downhill, this can overcharge the cells. So having this function allows you to reduce the maximum charge voltage allowed on the wheel. So you can set it to whatever number you want. And this means that when you're going downhill, you don't overcharge it. Again, this is more of a safety function. Uh, really only necessary for people who live at the top of a hill and immediately once the wheel is at a full charge um, and they're going downhill and they're braking hard, then it's overcharging the cells and the wheel's giving you an alarm. So you might want to reduce this voltage to a lower number. So we'll turn this back up. The next one is acceleration assist. Acceleration assist basically allows the wheel to 
uh, temporarily tilt the pedals forward to make it easier for you to accelerate. So this number is adjustable all the way up. Again, with something like this, it's always nice to start out at a lower number, get a feel for it, understand what it does before you turn it all the way up to 100%. Now, the torque alarm, which is ALM, on and off. This is the torque alarm, basically whether the alarm will sound because you have reached the maximum torque given by this uh, unit. So you can disable the torque alarm or turn it on or off. So that's an option right there. Next function is angle tilt percentage, which is angle tilt recenter. Now again, this is a advanced function for riders who are taking this wheel to off-road. Basically what this function does is it reduces the gyroscope recalibration time. So for people who are riding berms who are going off-road, they'll feel that the pedals might tilt back too soon. That's because the gyroscope is recalibrating too quickly. Now, out of the factory, it's at zero. If you're going off-road and you're finding that the pedals are doing a weird behavior or they're tilting you up when you really want them to maintain level, you can try a number between 10% to 20%. Any higher is really up to personal, but most every rider I've seen in our community have stuck with under 20%. Now the last function is brightness. So you'll notice these two holes on your NOSFA arrow and that's the photoresistor for the headlight to turn on and off. So turning this function off means that even when you go through a dark environment, the headlight will not turn on. So you can turn that on or you can turn it off. So the auto headlight function basically. Okay, and double tap to back out and that's it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. If there's any other videos you want to see, please let me know. Um, again, this was just a quick start guide on how to get started on your NOSFA Aero. I imagine a lot of people who are buying this product already understands it, understands all of these functions. But if you still have more questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below and I'll try to answer it. Um, but always try to reach out to your NOSFA retailer first. They will be the most knowledgeable about the product as well. And they'll be there to answer your questions faster than I can. And uh, thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.